what I want to talk about was uh, being named in the uh, magazine. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that something that you, uh, the chamber, campaigned for, or did you apply for? Or how, where did that come from? It co um, the designation comes from um, its readers and surveys, and um, so it's not like uh, an editorial where you, uh, you buy it and you get the ad. Uh -huh. um, I mean, don't get me wrong, we do advertise with them, but it was something that we get selected by, our, by the magazine readers and places uh, uh, that the professionals and the people, the planners and the sports professionals look at. So you, th you think that uh, it also got the designation because of be okay, one out? I think a lot of those things. I think with the new, new ballpark, <clears throat> and a lot of people pay attention to those things. The industry looks at who's doing sports venue construction, so those things get talked about in the industry, and then you look at um, be okay getting built, and then One Oak, and then you talk about, you know, um, Spirit Center is just you know three years old, the Reynolds Center is not very old either. So if you look at a city of our size, there's been a lot of investment in um, sports venues, uh, which is important for us long term, especially when we get recognized uh, by that publication. And the opportunity is now we just need to, you know, capitalize on that. And there's things we're going to try and do to um, to keep that momentum and drive that impact. Obviously, we need to book some business, and that's what we're trying to do as well. Um, but it's about, you know, it's about getting recognized first, and then now we need to start communicating marketing on that message that we have a lot to offer and getting people in the community to support that um, financially and then getting the industry to come into town and visit our venues. And uh, communicate that message. You mentioned, um, I'm sorry, you mentioned Chili Bowl was successful. Absolutely. First, I mean, again, you can't get a ticket to it. Um, I went out one night. It's a great event. You know, where there's um, uh, talking to um, um, Emmett and, and uh, Lanny. We want to help. I think when we get more involved next year with them and help them um, with opportunities, maybe to help them. Um, um, do some hotel packages, do some tourism stuff that we'd like to impact because that's really, you know, heads and beds is, is good for us. Help them maybe track their hotel impact a little better. You know, the things that are in our wheelhouse, we certainly should offer those to those current events, um, the existing events in the community so that we can just make them better. Any chance it would move to be okay? I don't think so because of the space they need um, uh, for, the, for the expo. And then for uh, the operational setups and stuff, if you look at their, their venue at the Expo Square, they pretty much use the whole place. And um, for all the heavy equipment and vehicles, uh, parking would be another challenge for them. So I, honestly, I, I couldn't see it moving just because of the sheer space they need down there that's not available downtown currently. The timing of this recognition couldn't be better for you with uh, March Madness and uh, the tournament coming up. Uh, any idea on, uh, well, like ticket sales or advanced ticket sales? Or have numbers on that? Well, it's picked up. Um, I think we're, you know, it changes every day, but I think we're, um, we're we have uh, sold over 10,000 seats of the 17,000. And I think, uh, you know, like a lot of the venues, the ticket sales are picking up. We're starting a marketing plan. I think you'll see a lot of that uh, in the community on, on uh, outdoor sign boards and uh, in the local market, in the media, the newspapers, and some CBS and TV and folks. And we'll start spending uh, some of that capital to drive awareness, communication, and interest. And I think the other thing is we, we talked about bracketology today with the council, you know, and, and uh, I said, hey, if you want to kind of figure out what's going on, you know, there's several sites out there, but I'm a, I, I go to ESPN, bracketology, and CBS. Those seem to be yeah. the two. And, uh, you know, if the world stopped today, <clears throat> you know, I think the top eight teams, the, top, uh, the eight teams that would be in our bracket, I think we'd be very happy with. But, you know, that's all going to change in the next four weeks. But, well, honestly, we, we, we um, TU is our, our partner, or we're their partner, I don't care how you say it. But um, I think realistically we're, we're, we're hopeful that we end up with um, a couple of Big 12 teams, um, the Kansas, the Texas, you know, Texas a travel teams. And we'll do we'll do quite well. Those those four or five thousand tickets that, that will be remaining by then, if there's that many at all, will evaporate overnight. Once they announce those on March 13th, I think you could pretty much uh, forget about those tickets if it's a if it's a school of that size, and or if it's you know if it's a Missouri or you know a Big East school that travels well, or North Carolina or somebody like that. 
you know, those fans, um, um, if you haven't got your tickets by then and they announce those teams on the 13th, you can pretty much sure they're not going to be available. <laughs> right. And that's our, that's our hope too. I mean, I think the NCAA has been really good about putting teams in those second, third round areas that they know uh, are regional teams and they're going to draw out. Okay. All right. Uh, did this kind of come out of the blue, this announcement, or was it something you kind of expected? Or No, I mean, they, they, you always, you know, we submit paperwork for different events. I know um, we always look at um, submitting events for awards, uh, and you submit them, and you never know if they get selected until they go through a they go through a jury process or a selection process, and you don't really get notification. You don't never get notification you lost, you know. So when you don't get notified at all, you just figure you didn't get selected. But um, we got notification. We were very very positive about that that, that we did get picked. Do you have any kind of uh, economic impact numbers for uh, the uh, March event? Um, right now, we're saying you know, and again, it depends on um, the uh, who who, mm -hmm. because it's going to be seventy thousand to one hundred thousand fans are going to go through the downtown area that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And obviously, if it's regional teams, we'll have a huge. It'll impact our hotel stay. <clears throat> if they're if they're um, drive-in teams, if it's an OU or OSU, that's going to impact our hotel stay. Mm -hmm. So ideally, we want the Kansases and the Texases that will drive in or fly in and stay two or three nights. Yeah. Um, I think the economic impact, and I can I can look at one of our folders, but I think it's somewhere between 11 and, and uh, uh, 13 million. But I'd have to look at our exact spreadsheet. We, okay. But we'll do analysis on that at the end of the event, um, and the NCA gives us a lot of those numbers as well, okay. based on their historical information from the tournament. All right. Uh, I'm pretty much done. Is there anything you want to add? That maybe I haven't asked about. No, I, I think we're. Um, We've got a couple of new announcements coming out. I think we're close to signing some some event deals with some new um, partners, and um, you know we're really just trying to engage the community. You know we want their input, uh, and, and our sports uh, commission boards really. I think they're they're really focused on helping us, um, mm -hmm. advancing the sports industry in the region, not just Tulsa, but in the region. Because there's some great venues out there that that uh, we need to help get utilized. So. Super. All right. Well, appreciate the time. You bet. Thank you.